Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hammered Corner. In today's video we have an introduction into the coinage of Edward VI. On screen now you can see displayed timestamps so you can easily refer to certain parts of the video in the future. But just before we get into it, if you'd like to watch more introductory videos on different coinages, then a link to the playlist will be down in the video description. Edward VI was King of England for six years and died at the age of 15, but his short reign saw the full-scale introduction of the Protestant religion. Edward was born on the 12th of October 1537 at Hampton Court Palace and was the only legitimate son of Henry VIII. Henry's desperation for a son had led him to divorce two wives, but Edward's mother, Henry's third wife, Jane Seymour, died a few days after his birth, and Edward was given a righteous education and was a very intellectual person, although his health was never strong. Edward became king at the age of nine, when his father died in January 1547. His father had arranged that a council of regency should rule on his behalf, but Edward's uncle, Edward Seymour, who was Duke of Somerset, took power and established himself as protector. Somerset and Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer, were intent on making England a truly Protestant state, supported by the young king. An English prayer book was issued in 1549, with an act of uniformity to enforce it. It soon became clear that Edward was suffering from tuberculosis and would not live very long. Northumberland was determined that his religious reforms should not be undone, so he persuaded Edward to approve a new order of succession. This declared Mary illegitimate and passed the throne to Northumberland's daughter-in-law, Lady Jane Grey, who was a more distant descendant of Henry VIII. Edward VI died on the 6th of July 1553. However, Jane was only queen for a few days until, with overwhelming popular support, Mary took the throne. Numismatically, Edward's reign is very interesting, with new denominations being produced and the increase in silver finesse in Edward's third coinage. There is plenty of history behind some of the coins that shaped the future of numismatics. We then have the posthumous issue of coinage that was minted during his reign, but bore his father's name and portrait. The debasement in English coinage was becoming a massive economic problem, and their first plan to combat this issue was to increase the amount of silver in their coins, but actually coin them at lower weights. So even though the debased coinage was minted at 80 grains, coins would now be minted at 60 grains but contained a higher precious metal percentage. For this first issue of coinage was soon discredited and was soon back up to 80 grains. It wasn't until the third period, or the fine silver issue coinage, that coins were being minted to an acceptable standard and was at that time the finest quality coins that were produced during the Tudors. Coins were now being minted with Roman numerals next to the bus for the very first time, denoting the coin's denomination, minted between 1551 and 1553. So we have lots to cover today, so let us first look at the posthumous coinage Edward issued between 1547 and 1551. A posthumous coin is one that was minted after the death of a monarch, and in Edward's case, was minted using his father's portrait and his name in the legend, King Henry VIII. During this period, Edward minted a gold sovereign, a half sovereign, both displaying Edward's enthroned portrait, but as you can see on the top of the coin, it bears his father's name. A crown and half crown, very similar to those minted during Henry's reign, with Henry's initial either side of the crowned rose and shield, and his name in the legend. Now that was all the gold coins minted during the posthumous issue, and the silver coins were the half penny, penny, half groat, which is a coin most commonly found by detectorists and who think the penny is of Henry VIII, but it's almost always a posthumous issue, a groat, and finally a testoon. So if you're looking to collect coins from this period, it may seem difficult at first to distinguish coins from Edward's reign and that of his father, minted in the third coinage, when they both share Henry's name and portrait. But on screen now, you can see a few examples of the comparative coins, but you can see slight but noticeable differences straight away, without even learning how to do so. Secondly, we will look at the coinage minted in his own name, minted between 1547 until his death in 1553. We categorise Edward's coins into three periods. The first period minted between 1547 and 1549, the second period minted between 1549 and 1550, and the third period minted between 1550 until 1553. Please note that this excludes the posthumous coinage and is only for the coins minted in the name of Edward, as they were both issued at the same time. The gold coins minted during Edward's reign are the extremely rare double sovereign, 
the Sovereign, with the King enthroned and now bears his own title in the legend, the Half Sovereign, the Crown and Half Crown, and an Angel and Half Angel. Different denominations were minted and introduced in different periods, and will all be listed clearly in your Spinks book. So now we'll look at the silver denominations minted during his reign. We have the introduction of the crown and the half crown, with king on horseback, the very popular shilling, the sixpence, the very rare groat minted in the first period, a threepence, the half groat, the penny, the half penny, and finally the farthing. It is incredible how much you can see the king mature in his younger years in his portraiture, from the debased first issue coinage bearing a very baby-faced king, to his later offices bearing a much older young man in comparison. If we take a look at the three issues of silver coins minted during each period, you can see the difference between the silver content and the overall changing quality. The first and second issue of his coinages are always significantly rarer, and thus more expensive to obtain in high grades being that they contained a higher base metal percentage that reacts to the environment more so than precious metals. The third issue of coinage were up to the Royal Standard Finesse and are without a doubt the most affordable of the three, with higher quality coins being cheaper and easier to obtain. The three periods developed from side facing profiles of the young king, almost hiding his face, to a more confident front facing portrait in his third coinage. The reverses are also developed. Edward redesigned the shield that introduced garnishes around a more oval coat of arms, reverting back to the standard long cross and Tudor shield that we see developed until the reign of Charles I. It was the first time since Henry VII introduced the Testoon that we had any high silver denomination introduced. The Testoon wasn't taken very well by the people, and was later reintroduced by Henry VIII in the third coinage, minted incredibly debased. The Testoon was reintroduced by Edward as the shilling, worth 12 pence. Edward also introduced the crown, worth 5 shillings, and the half crown, worth 2 shillings and 6 pence. This would be the introduction of one of the most collectible denominations to date, especially after the wide variety that Charles I issued during the time of English Civil War with Parliament. I thought I would quickly mention the shovelboard coinage that was very popular during Edward's reign, with the introduction of the silver shilling. Shovelboard is a game which players shove or drive by blows of the hand pieces of money or counters towards certain marks, compartments or lines marked on the table, each giving you different points. You will often find shillings with offices of the coins completely wiped away, and in Gary Odie's research, we have silver rims added, and some have been discovered to have the player's initials on the top side, with the bottom side being used in the game. So even if you're on a budget and you think you're buying a warm portrait of the boy king, your coin may be holding a lot more history than he first thought. Huge thanks to Gary Odie's journal on the British Numismatic website for his write-up, informational research and photos. Links to his write-up will be down below. So let us look at the legends and the mint marks on his coins. Edward's legends surround the obverse and the reverse of each coin and change throughout the development of his coinages. So here are a few legends from the first, second and third coinages. We will start with some of the obverse legends. First we have The Fear of the Lord is the Fountain of Life, 1549, found on the debased issue during the second coinage. The most common legend translating to Edward, by the grace of God, King of England, France and Ireland. We then have some of the reverse legends that vary depending on denomination. The most common legend found on this shillings translates to I have made God my helper also found on the coinages of his father and grandfather. Next we have, As for his enemies, clothe them with shame. And the reverse legends found on the smaller denominations may have, I have made God my helper, or Civitas and the name of the mint, translating to City of. Lots to think and learn about, and there is an incredible website called PS Detecting that covers and translates so many legends, mint marks, and what denominations they can be found on. It has helped a lot, and links will be below for you to do your own additional learning and research. Extremely helpful if you haven't got your spink book to hand. The mint mark can be found at the top of the coin, just before the king's name and the legend on the obverse. The mint mark is a small object or symbol that is used to show where and when it was minted. On mine, we have the very common Y mint mark, and as you can see when I look in my spinks book, it was minted in Suffolk in 1551, and the spinks book is an incredibly useful tool for this. 
as well as the PS detecting website. There were no Scottish coins minted under an English ruler until James I, when he unified Great Britain in 1603. So there was no Scottish issues during Edward's reign, but as Henry VIII was officially made King of Ireland in 1541, the title was passed to his son and Edward issued his own Irish coinage. The first coins issued in his reign were harp groats, which differed from the last issue of the previous reign only by omission of the regional year. Edward's minister in England planned to finance the restoration of sound currency by a continued but temporary issue of debased money. To conceal the means of the reform from the general public, the coins were minted in the name and portrait of Henry VIII. And when the Dublin Mint was reopened in 1547, base groats, half groats, pence and half pence of English type, and of marginally better alloy than the worst of Henry VIII harp coins, were made current for six pence, three pence, three half pence, and three farthings. However, in 1552, there was a reversion to the baser 0.25 finesse. Some of the dies are of English workmanship, though others of cruder style are obviously of local manufacture. It seems likely that the base English shillings with the portrait of the young King Edward with the harp mint mark may have been struck expressively for Ireland in 1552, though there is no surviving documentary evidence for this issue. And here is a comparison of two coins. The coin on the left was minted in Ireland using locally made dies, with the same coin on the right that was minted at the Tower Mint made for circulation in Ireland. As you can see, you can see that it has less detail on the face, especially noticeable around the eyes. A coin minted from this period from local dies is on my bucket list of coins I would love to acquire in the future. The Irish posthumous coinage was minted between 1547 and 1550, and the Irish sixpence was the same size as the English groat. And there was then a shilling produced alongside them in 1552, bearing the portrait of the king and the harp mint mark. So there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. So if you'd like to learn more about different coinages, then please follow the links on screen and down below in the description. Thank you all for watching, and as always, keep collecting!